Good evening. Welcome to the April 5th, 2018 Open Caucus Session for the Armstrong School District Board of Directors. Would you please rise with me for a moment of reflection, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Burdell. Here. Ms. Bowser. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Elkin. Here. Ms. Lowe. Here. Dr. Lobby. Here. Mr. Mulroy. Here. Mr. Skate. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. The Board of School Directors of Armstrong School District convened an executive session on Thursday, April 5th, at 7 o'clock, I'm sorry, 6.45 p.m. in the faculty lounge of West Hills Intermediate School in Katani for discussion of personnel, real estate, and student confidentialities. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll have our student board representative report for West Shemokin Junior Senior High School. Good evening. I'll be representing uh, Shannock Valley Elementary and Dayton Elementary tonight. At Shannock Valley Elementary, uh, the fourth graders just finished creating advertisements for local businesses. All of these advertisements will soon be published in the later times. The students at Shannock Valley Elementary are excited to have their pep assembly on April 9th. It will consist of motivational music as well as a grand finale consisting of a drum battle between Dr. Jean Cola and the music teacher, Mr. Everett. This assembly is a great event in order to get students excited for the upcoming PSSA testing. The second graders are hosting a family game night tonight from six to seven to introduce new board games to students and their families. This is yet another great opportunity for a family night out. In Dayton Elementary, on the week of March 4th, Dayton Elementary participated in National Breakfast Week. On March 13th, Dayton Elementary held kindergarten registration, which allowed for incoming kindergartners to see their new school and for parents to see the excellent facilities and classrooms. On March 16th, the Dayton Elementary Volunteer Fire Department came to the school to visit the different classrooms. The firefighters taught the students about fire safety and the importance of smoke detectors. On March 17th, a bingo fundraiser was held at the Dayton Fairgrounds. The fundraiser was a great success. The monthly wellness program was held on March 21st. On March 23rd, a parent-child dance was held as a fundraiser for the PTO, <coughs> which provided yet again another fantastic opportunity for students to have a night out with their parents. The sixth graders visited West Shemokin Junior Senior High School on March 23rd. They met with their student ambassadors and participated in icebreaker games and toured their future school. During the week of March 26th, Dayton Elementary participated in the annual book fair. <coughs> Students were able to purchase books from their favorite authors. And on March 29th, the students participated in a PBIS reward dance. They have been learning dances in their phys ed classes and this provided them with an arsenal of dance routines to use during the dance. Uh, Dayton Elementary participated in Title I Family Night last night, and today Dayton Elementary sixth graders are being rewarded through their Gold Pass program. They're going to the Catanning YMCA to participate in sports and other wellness activities. Uh, the last day of the Dayton Elementary walking program will be held on April 13th. And on April 28th, the students of Dayton Elementary will be participating in a Keller run. This is yet another fun opportunity for students to participate in physical activities. And with both schools, with the PSSAs just around the corner, uh, both schools are preparing uh, immensely for those exams. I'll be representing West Shemokin and Elderton Elementary. Uh, in the music department, the Region Band Festival was held at West Shemokin on February 22nd. 155 musicians from 50 schools attended, and the concert was a great success. Uh, members of the Senior High Chorus performed at the Dishwith Chorus Festival in, Festival in Dubois. 
And select students attended the Junior County Chorus and Junior County Band at Freeport Middle School. And this year's musical, The Music Man, was, a, was well received by audiences during its three performances on March 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And students attended a production of Wicked at the Benetton Center. It was like a, a final trip for the chorus and band students. Uh, the band's spring concert will be held tomorrow, April 6th. And a mini opera will be held at West Shemotin on May 21st. Students from IUP are coming into West Shemotin to present some of the basic fundamentals of opera and try and get some appreciation for it in uh, younger kids. In science, students in Biology 2 and AP Biology attended an organ and tissue donation awareness symposium at United High School on March 6th. They had someone who has donated their organs and somebody who has received organs come in to talk about the various things. And someone from, I believe, is it St. Louis University? St. Louis University uh, talked about uh, the parts of the human body and they, they, they gave a live autopsy by a Skype of a, of a cadaver. And students enrolled in Physics 2 and 3 attended the Physics Olympics at Indiana University of Pennsylvania on March 23rd. The event was organized by a former alumni of West Shemotin, Colin Adamson. And the team placed first in the Spaghetti Bridge Building Competition and third in another event. And in our clubs, students on the impromptu speech, current events, family consumer science, math, and science teams competed in the Heritage Conference academic they, com, uh, competitions at local high schools. West Shemotin hosted the current events competition. Students will be attending the Youngstown State English Festival soon. Ninth through 12th graders will attend on April 18th, while 7th through 8th graders will be attending on the 19th. The Board Game Club, which was created earlier in the year by members of NHS, has been running bi-weekly meetings where kids can relax after school and play some of their favorite board games. Uh, West Shemotin's Safest Drivers attended the Safe Driving Day competition at IUP's North Point campus on March 23rd. Ethan Adamson, a junior, placed third overall. And student ambassadors led the sixth grade transition day activities on March 23rd. Incoming seventh graders were given a tour of West Shemotin's classrooms, activities, and facilities, and attended a dress rehearsal of the Music Man at the end of their tour. And with our seniors, the Students of the Month banquet was held on April 3rd. Sixteen students were recognized for their accomplishments in academics, activities, and service in the community. Uh, the class of 2018 will head to New York City for their class trip on May 25th. And our students of the month for March were Luke Schreckengost and Carly Melito. And the students of the month for April are Will Fetchto and Eric Sickle. And Mays are Anna Lambing and Luke Painterton. And at Elderton Elementary, students are preparing vigorously for their PSSA exams. And mathematically inclined students will be participating in the annual Math 24 competition on April 26th. The Mobile Agriculture Lab will be paying students a visit during the week of May 7th. It will feature a wide variety of activities and experiments that promote, that promote conservation, ecology, and healthy environmental practices. Students in the GIEP program will be attending the annual Gifted Fair on May 10th where they present their projects and what they've been working on the past year, and that will be held here. Uh, the annual Spring Concert will be held on May 17th. And on June 1st, sixth graders will have the opportunity to visit Washington, D.C., where they will witness some of our nation's most important monuments, historical sites, and, government, and governmental landmarks. And uh, this is my last time here before the school board, and I'd like to thank everybody for this great opportunity. It was an honor to come and serve, and I'm excited for to pass the torch on to Eric next year. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Evan. I'm glad you said that. If you weren't going to announce that, I was going to announce that. Um, I just want to say that you've been a fantastic student board representative, very active, very engaged, and a wonderful speaker. I'm sure you're going to do well in whatever you choose to do. Hopefully the experiences you gain from sitting in some of these, some exciting, not so exciting times, you can take with you for, uh, for whatever you end up doing. Thank you, there's some best of luck. Thank you. I'd like to give a footnote to that, just so the board's aware. Uh, this young man is going to go to IUP and major in History education. So in four years, um, you'll come back here. Absolutely. We'll say we'll say we'll keep a seat warm for you. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, central office reports. Yeah, the first thing uh, we have guests here this evening. I'm going to introduce Karen Brock and she wants to go a step further and introduce our new director at Lenape Vote Tech. So Karen, without any further ado, please feel free to give us the introduction. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Karen Brock. I am the current director for the next couple months at Lenpe Tech. Um, I want to extend our thanks to Ms. Bowser, Mr. Scaife, and Mr. Smith for being active participants in our JOC and coming to an additional meeting every month. 
on top of the meetings they have here for ASD. And as you know, this is an active enrollment period for students applying to LNP Tech. My two counselors, Mrs. Liggis and Mr. Jones, want to extend their appreciation um, to the guidance counselors at West Shemokin and, and Armstrong High Schools. They have been so cooperative this year. There's good communication between the three schools, um, and they're extremely appreciative of all the hard work um, that the counselors there at both of those high schools also um, have to, you know, do to help these kids transition to Lenape Tech. At this time, I want to introduce Mr. Wesley Cookta. He is a new director. He begins that role on July 1st, um, and I'll let him have the microphone. Thank you again. I just want to take the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, this is my second year here at Lenape Tech. Previously, I was at A.W. Beatty Career Center serving as their principal. Um, what, what brought me to Lenape is the cooperation of our sending districts working uh, with the academic and career side of education uh, and, and quite honored to take the role July 1st. Uh, for those of you who haven't RSVP'd, hopefully you will be making it out as Lenape is hosting the Aaron Convention for the first time ever on April 17th. Uh, so hopefully you'll be uh, coming to that event. We will be hosting a tour of the building beforehand. So if you have not been to our building and seen our building in action, uh, it's not as great at night when there's not students there. Um, but it is something we are lo looking forward to showcasing our building and really what all the wonderful work that our students do throughout it. So not only the tour, we will have a gallery walk showcasing our students' work as uh, everyone comes in uh, for the evening. And I know Mrs. Failer, our culinary arts teacher, as well as our students have prepared an excellent menu uh, for that evening. So we look for, forward to showcasing our building, but more importantly, our students' work that evening. Um, if you have any questions throughout uh, tonight or obviously throughout the process, please reach out. Um, more than happy to uh, answer questions or at the very least have you out to the building and see that. Um, I'd like to just recognize Mr. Rummel and Dr. Shutters, who in my two years here at Lenape have, have been great to work with, very cooperative, um, a constant lot of communication, as well as Dr. Pock and Dr. Glue uh, for Mrs. Timmons and myself working on a lot of special education issues uh, where we can provide students with an excellent opportunity uh, to learn a trade uh, to hopefully make them successful after they leave both Lenape and the Armstrong School District. Thank you. You're hey, welcome. Thank you. Lenape is a great resource for the community and very much appreciated, so thank you. Any other central office? Yeah, uh, Mr. Kirk, give you an update where we are in terms of the budget process for next year. Um, yeah, we've been, we've been working on the budget since October. Departments and buildings have been submitting their information and that's been in and we've been pu pulling it all together. Um, I would say right now the budget's probably 98 to 99% done. We're still wait waiting on some final staffing meetings to take place and some recommendations on staffing from both the secondary and elementary levels. One of the items, uh, Vote Tech, we're approving their budget tonight, but they're still, uh, it's open enrollment right now for both of our schools. So once that enrollment's done, they will then uh, give us a number of what our um, shares to be. So the plan is uh, at, at the May 10th caucus meeting, we will give a budget presentation to the board of the community. The board will receive those documents early that week, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, I'll have them out to you prior to the Thursday meeting. On the, then on the 14th, we'll need to vote on a preliminary budget, and again, that is not the final budget. We vote on that preliminary budget, it sits for 30 days. We will, it will continue to be worked on throughout those 30 days until we do a final approval on June 18th. Um, it will be public display of that budget. We send copies out to all buildings, we put it on our website, and if anybody ever wants to come in and they look and ask questions of us, we're, we're open to do that. So um, you will see that big document, the 40, 50 page document, coming soon, early May, and then we'll present it at the caucus meeting on the 10th. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Yeah, just the you know, only other item of note, and maybe it's a little bit of uh, reflection on our part. It's in regards to the national movement that occurred on March 14th uh, to draw attention to school, school violence and pay tribute to the 17 victims who lost their lives in the attack in Florida. Um, never from the beginning did, did we openly endorse nor did we openly denounce that national movement and in terms of how we were going to deal with that in the Armstrong School District. Um, in the end, um, certainly hindsight's 2020. We had participation of both schools. We felt like it was the administrative responsibility to provide those students wishing to participate and pay tribute 
a safe haven under certain expectations that were provided by the administrators and that did occur. We had about 200 students, like I said, at both schools participated. As we begin to evaluate those things in 28 years in, in education, never had to deal with, with something similar like that in terms of a national movement that over 2,000 schools nationwide participated in. However, after discussions with multiple parents and administrators, we can certainly do a better job in the future if certain instances come up again. We can do a better job of informing our parents as to what our stance is going to be so they have an opportunity to have a discussion with their students at home whether or not they want to participate in the activities that the student led. So just my comments to the public, of course, uh, and to the board as to what happened on that day and how we live and learn in this environment and keep moving forward. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll move to uh, any public comments on agenda items at this time. Okay, no public comments. Uh, general. We have one more under general before we get to the presentation of the regular monthly agenda, and that's the opposition to the DSA voucher program, Senate Bill 2. Do you have a... Um, I think there's some documents that were attached to your board materials. So I would appreciate if, if all of the board members, if you haven't already, to read through that and uh, you know, think about any questions or, or issues you have with that, because I would like to add this resolution to the agenda on Monday to oppose Senate Bill 2. Do you have a, just a brief description? The Senate, Senate Bill 2 is uh, educational savings account. It's similar to what the vouchers were years ago. It, it provides the account for, for families who are children attend a, a school that's in the bottom 15 percent of student achievement and they have the ability to pick a private institution uh, to go to and they provide a source of monies for them to use to pay for tuition books and, and other types of supplies what it would do is it would directly take funds the, the money would fall to kids so to speak so in, in terms of we had that situation in our district which hopefully we never, we never experienced that uh, but if we did it would take money or tax money and send it to a private institution. It's uh, recommended from the Pennsylvania School Board Association, the districts across the Commonwealth oppose Senate Bill 2, and we can certainly do that. Um, like Chris said, there, there's a summary of Senate Bill 2 in your packet. Feel free to take time to read. If you have any questions, give myself a call, and I can give you more information as it, as it relates to how it may impact us down the road if, in fact, it gets enacted. Yeah, I think once you read through it, it's a very flawed proposal. Um, it doesn't have any of the intended positive outcomes that it promised or promises um, with a lot of negative consequences. So um, do we, should, should I, how do we add that to the agenda? <coughs> we want a consensus to put it on the voting meeting agenda. Okay, before we even get to the presentation of the regular. Yeah, you, well, you brought it up. <coughs> okay, ahead. okay. Uh, do I have consensus to add <coughs> that resolution to the agenda on Monday from board members? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion about that? I have two things. Uh, according to the Senate, it was referred to the Senate Education Committee in October, and I think there was a notice today or yesterday that the, the Education Committee was planning to pull it, put it on the Senate floor this month. And just one side note, Senator White is a co-sponsor. Thank you. Yep, yep, thank you. We can have additional discussion on Monday if you want about this. Okay, presentation of the regular monthly agenda. Um, so I will look for, uh, first of all, we have the minutes for the open caucus session for March 8th and the regular meeting on March 12th. Um, so if there isn't any discussion around those, I would ask for consensus to add that to the agenda on Monday. Okay. Next are bills. Uh, the bills that we will be adding are the Food Service Fund for March 2018, Capital Projects Fund for March, the Athletic Fund, and the presentation of bills for payment. If there isn't any further discussion on that, can I have consensus to add that to the agenda? Now, uh, education, there are five items under education. Um, does the administration want to comment about any of those before we have a consensus to add? 
Uh, well, yeah, I have actually a request uh, for an addition under education uh, pertaining to a, a trip. It would be the uh, National Quiz Bowl trip for Washamokan High School. Both of our high schools qualified um, to participate. The large school championship is listed here under Ed 2 um, as participation in the tournament in Georgia. The small school championship, which Washamokan qualified for, um, I'm asking for the board's consideration to add that for Monday um, to approve uh, their attendance. Uh, that takes place in Chicago, Illinois. Um, which they did actually participate last year, yes. Um, uh, I, d I really don't have any other comments on there. The uh, SAT prep course we did put out again this year, although last year, you may recall, we did not have uh, enough student participation to fill that. Um, we did offer it again next year. The software platform that we're using for guidance, which was approved last month, is going to fulfill that role because that's one of the, the opportunities that exists within that system. Why do you think people aren't participating in that? Is the message getting to homes? I, the feedback that we've gotten from students is there's just a lot of other opportunity out there where, you know, the, the students are, are often so busy they want to be able to do that on their terms you know, when they choose to do that. Um, there's a lot of free online opportunities uh, through various platforms. Um, the software package that we're using with guidance is gonna give us the opportunity uh, to do that with them and, you know, they'll have the chance, it's anywhere, anytime, wherever they have internet access. Uh, but the, the key thing about that also is we'll be able to tie it to the data from schools you know, in terms of examining their performance on prep work and, and so forth and how that fits with what different schools expect and, you know, require. How many students are going to Quiz Bowl? Uh, seven students. So. Uh, the cost of the, the trip is, is listed here in the 1251 I received is about uh, 1700 one chaperone? Two chaperones. One male, one female. Okay, Thank so, I'm, I'm sorry, and, uh, in addition to the student, uh, those overnight trips, the approval of the SAT <coughs> prep course, student transfer requests, we have Ed4 is school-based extended school year services for students in the autistic support program, and then authorization, Ed5 is authorization to apply for ESEA, Title I funds, Title IIA funds, and Title IV funds for 18-19 school year. If there is no other discussion, do I have consensus to add those items to the agenda on Monday? Yes. Uh, business, four items. Business one, approval of Navigate, prepared quote. Business two, summer food service program. Business three is consideration of contracts for athletic supplies for next year. And business four is a lease agreement with the YMCA for the Catanian Cray School Stadium. Administration want to make some comments? Real brief about the Navigate. Uh, Navigate Prepared is uh, basically a, a software security platform that uh, will virtualize a lot of the protocols, you know, the things that we keep in binders. Um, it directs that all of those be constructed under FEMA regulations, rules, questions, um, provides ready access to that on any device. Uh, that's one component to it. So those you know, kind of those things, and it's not like we're going to run and get one when we're in an emergency, but it's easier to update them. Um, they're kept in one central location. Everybody has access to it inside, and the folks that need access to it from the outside. Uh, another component to it is they will come into all of our buildings. They will generate a digital map. Um, on that map will be the location of our shutoff valves, our cameras, uh, they will go into every single classroom and take a 360 degree photo uh, of it so that all that can be accessed, accessed by, you know, touching the map and it will show you. Um, again, something for our people inside, something for our, our, you know, our emergency personnel on the outside if they require it. Uh, I think the function of it that's really a attractive and key though um, and really makes it worth it is the child accounting portion that it has. Um, if we were in an emergency situation and Mr. Smith is going down the hallway and he grabs, 
you know, for Miss Johnson's kids on his way out and has them with him, you know, we can do child accounting with it on the fly. Um, you know, and it's real time, everybody sees that. Uh, so that's. We say this will be shared with local law enforcement, state police. That, absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, on the uh, backup, it has three elementary schools. Is that we're just being billed for three? We're, we're being billed for three. We negotiated a better price from what we started with, and that was reflected in that concept. Every one of our buildings is going to be taken care of. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 part of the rationale was the enrollment of some of our outlying buildings. We didn't think it justified that, so all of our buildings will be cut. Okay. And there's a $8,000 annual fee after that? Yes. 1000 per building. Yes. Right. Well, okay. And is there any additional fees for the uh, the uh, mapping of the floor plans and anything? No. There's a uh, one-time upfront cost, which includes license for the first year of sixteen thousand. Right. The six. So that covers the mapping. Yes. Now I asked that question because I have a quote they uh, a quote that they pre presented to Norton City Schools. And it has uh, a fee for the mapping. It has a fee for travel expense and an activation fee per building. That's all. I don't have to sit here and worry about that, right? No. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments about the business items? Yes. Um, we'd like to add a business five. And that would be a settlement of the tax appeal <clears throat> case that we discussed in executive session. We'd like to add that to the agenda. And again, the uh, Allegheny County and the assessment board is um, recommending and requesting that we agree to that. Armstrong County. Armstrong, Armstrong, Armstrong County. Armstrong County. Allegheny. Allegheny. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Armstrong County. So that, that would be item number five. Okay. So do I have Consensus to add five business items to the agenda on Monday. Yes. yes. Maintenance, one item, M1, purchase of 2018 transit no route passenger wagon. I assume that's a replacement. Yeah, I can comment on that. Um, we currently have a 2006 van, passenger van that needs about $1,300 worth of repairs to it. Um, so it's 98,000 miles. Instead of putting money into it, we decided to go out and purchase, purchase a new one. Uh, we got quotes from TriStar as well as Walker. This is the first people we're buying from TriStar. Their price was about $2,000 less for this. This is a 10th passenger van. It will replace the one we currently have. Um, we utilize these vans for small student trips, whether it's a athletic group or an academic group going places. <coughs> Our staff uses it instead of us paying mileage for it. Uh, saves us a lot of money in the long run. And a plan is then we're putting one in the budget for next year as well. We'll have one at Armstrong, and we'll have one at West Shemokin. So we each have one dedicated to their buildings, and as, as well as the elementary schools that feed into those. And then they'll all be controlled out of those buildings and be you know, requested to the secretary to, to utilize it. We expect some savings then from that? Yes. Is that the cream color van? Color, which color is it? We have all white, but it was one beige. Is it gray? I don't know if we have a beige. Oh, OK, they, yeah, they're gray. gray. I, think okay. I think it's gray, yes. I got you. Okay, do I have consensus to add M1 to the agenda for Monday? Yes. Yes. Construction, one item, proposal for construction support for AHS Stadium Complex. <coughs> this is for That's us to contract, right. yeah, to contract with Reynolds uh, to, to add, to give us just another uh, owner rep on the job up there, uh, about four hours a week. They already attended one meeting for us uh, just out of um, gratis. I mean, they're in their they're in district working a couple jobs already. I asked them to go and look just to see if, it, if they think working four hours a week would be able to help us, and they feel it would, would help us. So um, I know my understanding, I'm going to verify this, whether or not you know, we charge for mileage or you know, whether they're leaving from one place to another, but they're going to be here at Shannon and Ellerton. It's, it's my understanding that there won't be any mileage charged, or once they, they'll give us four hours on site, or they'll be reviewing documents when they're at another site. 
I, know I think it's important we have oversight. We yeah. needed someone on site for this project. If there aren't any other discussions, do I have consensus to add C1 to the agenda? Yes. 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 Uh, two items under uh, policy. Um, the first policy item is a minor addition. Um, by law, we're now required to have our contracted bus service drivers. The companies have to train them in child abuse compliance. The second item is policy 907. That is a rewrite of how we handle public complaint procedures. And um, be aware that it can result in an informal hearing in front of the board uh, in regard to complaints that aren't otherwise <coughs> resolved. Is this following state? Um, there are, not completely, it meets due process requirements we're required to follow, but there are some specialized federally funded programs that we have separate policies on where our procedure has to have different elements to it. <clears throat> such as a formal hearing versus an informal hearing. <clears throat> um, do I have consensus to have policy one and fifty the general on Monday? <clears throat> uh, four items under general. Um, the uh, I guess it's the approval of the Lenape Votex school budget. Um, at least our <clears throat> contribution to that. Establishment of a co-op sponsorship for boys golf, general two, and then general three and four have to do with school calendar amendments. You would report on any? Yeah, the, the amendment for 17-18, we had that recent snow day. This happened to us last year, too. We had our child county go back and work with the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Education. We have enough hours and, and minutes in our instructional year that uh, we don't believe that we need to bring our students in. We need the final answer on that uh, in writing as we move forward. Um, but it will require the teachers to report one day on the end of the year. Something similar happened to us last year as well. Um, the 18, 19 school calendar, the only change there is, is again, that we needed, we took a teacher day from the end and put it at the beginning. Uh, those are the only changes currently. Hopefully, we don't have to worry about the weather anymore. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, if there isn't any further discussion, I have consensus to add Gen 1 through 4 for Monday. I'd like to make a couple comments mm -hmm. on the sure. tech, tech budget. Uh, the tech budget, we face the same problems with the increase in the pension, the uh, contracted salaries, benefit costs, etc. <clears throat> Our fiscal year was, was 5450000 for this year. Uh, I spoke to the director and she said we're going to see about an $75,000, $80,000 increase uh, on our end of it. So just so, so you know. Even though the overall increase is ninety, we we're going to see a seventy or $80,000 increase. We will see that. Yes, that's, our, that's what she told me. That's all, that'd be yeah, our the overall increase was about 23 2.3%. dollars total. Yeah. Yeah. Our, the district's increase is 92. The total increase in their budget is 92. No, the total increase in the budget is 212 or something like that. Oh, is it? Is that it? Yeah. Our, our, there's a range of, of what our uh, force is going to be because it won't get finalized till we determine the number of students are going to attend. When enrollment gets solidified, we'll be able to come back and you'll be able to finalize your number. I do All appreciate right. uh, you keep pushing to get that number. <laughs> well, it's not much. I don't have that much in her, so it's going to add another 40 to it with what I have. Sell a vehicle. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on Gen 1 through 4? A consensus to add those to the agenda on Monday. Yes. Back over to the open caucus agenda. Um, does anybody have anything under other from either admin or board member? Just one comment from an administrative perspective. I uh, just want to give you an update. Last month, uh, the board voted and encouraged administration to look in providing additional security, uh, armed security in all of our buildings. We have done that over the course of last month. Our, our security uh, consultant was able to adequately staff 
every one of our buildings with at least one armed police officer. Um, today was the first day that all of our buildings were covered. We anticipate, um, with the exception of days of time off with some of the officers that he currently has on staff, that all of our buildings will be staffed with an armed police officer all day, every day when the students and teachers are in the building. We're also moving forward to get the board some prices regarding uh, metal detectors and x-ray machines for our elementary buildings. Uh, we have metal detectors currently at the high schools and we'll continue to tighten up security measures as we move forward. And we'll keep you posted on where we are with those things. So I appreciate that the push to do that and I know over the course of the last month visibility has increased in some of the buildings that haven't had as much security as we would have liked and we've got a lot of positive comments both from parents and staff and students alike. So thank you and I think money well spent moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other items under us? Uh, look for a motion and a second to adjourn. Motion. Mr. Burdell, second by Dr. Lobby. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you.